I just want to, you know, first of all, thank the Toronto Raptors organization, um, from ownership down to management, down to coaches and all my teammates over the last four years. Uh, I've been extremely blessed to, to be a part of that organization and to continue being a part of that organization. So I can't thank the Toronto Raptors enough. Um, obviously, I got my family here with me. I'd like to thank my family um, for, you know, making all of this possible, the person I am today. And, you know, I want to give a thanks to you ugly media people on the other side of the Zoom call uh, who have treated me pretty good in my first four years. And, um, you know, now that I got a nice big contract, don't, don't start shitting on me because uh, cause I, cause I make some good money now. So keep it up. Let's keep our good relationship going. Hey, Fred. Real happy for you and your family. Congratulations. Um, Thank you. Wanted to ask you, uh, so going into the process, did, did you feel like you'd be back in Toronto or was it that wide open? Um, I always felt like I'd be back. Um, I think for the most part, my intentions were always clear. I think uh, from their side, it was always clear. And it was so, almost like so straightforward that it made me question it a little bit. Like, it can't be this easy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so um, once we opened up a little bit, we had some interest from other teams. But it's like, again, it just nothing ever really panned out. And um, never really that many serious, you know, um, situations. There were early and then, you know, all of those things evaporated. So. Oh, we were right back to where we wanted to be. So it kind of made it, you know, a little bit better in that regard. It wasn't as stressful other than just, you know, trying to negotiate, uh, you know, with management. What was the what was the best advice you got going into this process, and did it come from Kyle? Uh, I mean, he's given me so much advice. I, I didn't really have too much advice going in other than just everybody I spoke to that had been through it just, you know, said enjoy it and, and go with your gut and just try to appreciate the moment and, and, uh, you know, don't fumble the bag. And last one, what are, what are your feelings about Tampa? It's kind of a, I don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I'm excited. Obviously, I would, I would love to be coming back to Toronto. Um, I haven't been, in, you know, since March. So it's, it's been a long time since I've been there. It's, you know, Toronto is turning into my second home. So obviously we missed the city, but I think, I mean, we got to be excited about, you know, what's, what's ahead of us. I can't not be excited about it. It won't make the experience that great. So we were in Florida for a while, you know, with the bubble in Orlando and right back there in Tampa. So hopefully, you know, it's uh, it's a good experience. All right. Thanks, Fred. Fred, congrats. Thank you. Very happy for you. Um, just a quick question off the top. Can you take us through a little bit of your, your backdrop there? It's uh, looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm always on brand, Mike. Always. <laughs> the uh, I mean, we see the V, the FVV, but the the what's the what's the the one in the circle? I can't really make. Oh, uh, that's a poker chip. It's backwards. We couldn't figure out the uh, the other side of the camera, so we got on on uh, the selfie mode right now. But uh, it's an old backdrop that we've had. We use it a lot for camps and different other things. So, um, you know, we we uh we brought it out for today. Very nice. Very nice. The um. You know, you, you've always been a guy who kind of thinks ahead and, and, and has ambitions and stuff like that. With, I'm always curious when a guy does, you know, strike a contract like this, what is something you want to do uh, with your life, your community, um, your family, something that, that you've been kind of waiting, waiting to do until, until this, this day came? And, and if there's something you can share or talk about. Um. The crazy part is uh, I've pretty much done everything I ever wanted to do already. <laughs> uh, not, you know, just honestly speaking, I've, I've done pretty much most of everything that's on the checklist. Uh, obviously, I just want to keep doing it at a higher level and, a, and on a bigger scale. Um, but I think the biggest thing for me is just being able to just relax and just kind of exhale for once. I've been, I've been, on this journey for you know 26 years and really 21 years if you're counting from when I really started playing basketball. So uh, I've just been there's a lot of pent up uh, anxiety and just uh, you know feelings about trying to get to this moment. So I'm um, just being able to exhale and just you know 
release and, and feel good about how far we've made it um, before, you know, getting ready for camp and, and get ready for the next year. So, uh, you know, I just, I'm, I'm really happy and blessed to be in this position, but I'm kind of already thinking about the next one. The, uh, and, and you think that's going to be a, something you're going to have to learn a little bit, like how to motivate and challenge yourself, you know, when you do, you know, you've reached such a huge goal in your life, really. Um, you know, how do you kind of uh, kind of keep that same internal pressure going that, that got you to this point? Um, that's just who I am. So it's not an off and on switch. That, that, that never turns off. That's just who I am as a person, um, especially as a player and a competitor. I only know one way to play. And so that, that, that'll be easy. It's just more so, like I said, I've done everything that I've ever wanted to do pretty much. So it's like, it's not like I'm getting all this money and I have to go live a extravagant life and try to do all of these things that I've never been able to do before. I, I'm good, you know, and, and this is a generational thing. This is for my family and this is for the future of our families. And, and that's just kind of where I'm looking at it. So uh, nothing's really going to change on my end other than just being, you know, more comfortable having that security and being able to, to maneuver in certain ways and just kind of being able to open up and, and be myself a little bit more. Fred, thanks a lot for this. And, and again, I, I, I'm, I think everyone's really happy for you. So congratulations. Thank you. Hey, Fred, congratulations, man. I saw you tweeting something uh, the other day that people only see the end result of betting on yourself, that it's not all glamour. Over the last few days, you mentioned earlier reflecting. When you're reflecting back on your journey, is there any moment or anything specific about those early years that, that sort of come to mind? Um, yes, yeah, a lot. I think I just, I'm so warped in the NBA mode that I really, I really focus on my NBA memories. But I mean, from childhood on up, there's a, a million and one stories, you know, cramming in cars and driving to tournaments and, you know, you, you, there's teams flying to tournaments and we're jammed in a, a four door or a minivan with eight guys. And, and you fast forward to, to college and, you know, obviously being at a mid-major comes with, it, with its own challenges and not being uh, one of those those top schools. And then just like recently, just coming into the NBA, being doing all my draft workouts and being at, I won't say the team, but just being at a, a draft workout and like not having a ride to the airport, uh, showing up, they not knowing who I am, like, you know, shooting on a side basket by myself with no coaches rebounding for me like all of those things those type of things will never leave you and i'll never forget any of those moments so it's just it's funny to see it all come full circle but like i said that's what makes you know this this journey that much more special is the fact that how i had to do it and how fast it turned around for me what's it like i mean i i'm sure you you've look back over the, the years, if not recently, on that, on that video um, of you speaking to your family and friends after the draft in 2016. What's it like now, looking back on that? Um, I don't know. It's weird. Like, I, anybody who knows me knows how I am, so it's, it's just funny. But I always feel like I'm right. So it's not, it's not like a big deal to me. Like, I always – Felt like I knew what I was talking about when I when I got up there and I had to speak. I uh, I really meant those words. I was coming from the heart, but I really felt like that, and and I felt like I was right, and I knew that it would work out for me. And at that time, I might have been you know one of a handful of people who believed that, but you know here we are today. So uh, I guess it's more interesting to see how you have to be you know on your own, standing on your own too. And, and do it that way, and then people will follow you, and people will jump on the bandwagon, and, and they will start to see it after you make them see it. So that's the fun part for me is is now seeing how this this following is kind of growing, and and like you spoke about earlier, watching everybody try to uh, pretend to be underdogs and, and adopt the bet on yourself things. Like it's becoming mainstream now, which is hilarious to me. Thanks, Fred. Congrats again, man. Thank you. Hey, Fred, I assume with the whole bet on yourself, you're going to opt out a year for? I mean, damn, man, I, I knew you worked <laughs> for my side, bro. I just, this is, I'm not even in year one yet. Just chill. We'll get there. <laughs> Congratulations, of course. You. Uh, you touched on uh, 
you touched on a bit of what I wanted to ask, but obviously it's the biggest single deal anybody uh, who's gone undrafted has ever signed. Can you sense how you're sort of a role model, not, or, or if not a role model, sort of a, a North Star for a lot of people who are trying to follow that same path? Yeah, I mean, I, I knew that from day one, obviously it's grown to something completely different that I couldn't imagine now, um, like I said. So it was just funny to see how far it's gone. Um, but it also means a lot to me to know that, that what I'm doing is, is paving the way for a lot of guys after me. And there's guys getting drafted now that I know for a fact when they got drafted in my class or before my class, just because teams are, are looking at it like we don't want to miss out on the next, you know, Fred Van Vliet or this kid can be Fred or better than Fred or whatever the case may be. So just being able to be that guy who's kind of opening the lane and, and opening the doors for other guys to come after him. Um, obviously with, with uh, TD coming in last year, that was the first time I saw it on a personal level where I had a guy, you know, come to me and say, yo, I, I, I admire your story and I use a lot of what I saw you do. And, um, you know, I saw our two, two rookies this year speak on that quite a bit. So uh, that's cool. That's cool for me to see for sure. Um, when you sort of launched this whole thing and the, not that it, it was at any one moment, but obviously a lot of people associate it with draft day. Did you think of an end game like today or was it just, I'm going to keep on making better opportunities for myself? Like, was that it? Was there, could you picture a day like today, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah. I mean, a day is a lot bigger than today than what I had in my mind. So I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll leave you with that. Um, but like, this is just another step in the journey for me. Um, it's really just the beginning of the next chapter. And this is kind of, for me, at least closing a chapter on what has transpired up until this point. And now, you know, I feel like I'm on a level playing field and I've made it, I got both feet inside the door and I'm in the room and, and now it's time to really, you know, take off and go to another level. So I'm excited about, you know, um, what's in store for the future. And, and that's all I've been thinking about over the last couple of days. Obviously when we uh, made the agreement and we got it done, we got the deal done. That was like my time to celebrate and reflect and relax. But um, I'm already, I'm already looking ahead to, to what's next. Congrats, Fred. Well deserved. Thank you. Congratulations. As everyone else said, I have, Two questions for you. In the bubble after you guys lost game seven, Kyle was very emotional about the future, specifically you. And he said that he knew you were going to get rewarded, how much it meant to him that you were going to be able to take care of your family at such a high level going forward. What has his support and maybe even mentorship have meant to you kind of along this journey? Uh, it's hard to put into words, man. You know, I, I have a, a big family and I got a lot of brothers and friends that I grew up with that I consider brothers and, and Kyle fits right into that group for me um, over this last four years. His, his contribution to my career, um, it's, it's hard to, to put into words what exactly it's meant. But from day one, um, you know, luckily we were under the same umbrella as far as the agency goes. So uh, he showed me a, a lot of love from day one. And then I started to earn that trust and that respect. And then finally, once we got to Playing with playing together next to each other, then I think you know I I helped him and, and tried to pay him back for for all the advice and gems that he gave me. But I'm a I'm an observer anyway, so even if Kyle never said a word to me, I would have been able to pick up and learn from what he was doing right, what he was doing wrong, etc. And so for him to to take me under his wing and to put his arm around me and, and try to show me the way as best he can, you know, now it's my job to to take you know the game that he's passed down to me and take it to the next level. So uh, Kyle has been a, a huge, huge part of my career thus far. And I think it was important for him to, to see me rewarded for what I've done so far and also kind of, you know, lock, lock us in together for a little bit. I think, you know, we enjoy, uh, uh, you know, being in the backcourt together. And my second question, Fred, thank you for all that. My second question was, you got asked earlier about you know, Tampa, you're coming back to Florida. Going through the bubble experience, being separated from, from your fan base, um, being very disjointed for a while, you guys know what it's going to be like, I think, on some level. Were you excited, disappointed? How, I guess, how did you handle the news when you heard you were coming here and going through that bubble experience? 
experience of not having 20,000 people like you do in Toronto with you at every home game, does it almost help you now having gone through all that? Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's less of a sting because we haven't played in front of fans in so long. Um, but also, once we knew that, you know, Toronto was, was up in the air as far as us being able to return, um, I was just happy that it was somewhere warm. So, uh, you know, Tampa is, is, is right there, and, and hopefully, you know, we'll, we'll spend our time there and, and do what we got to do and, and then make our way back to Toronto at some point. Um, obviously, respecting all of the, the COVID guidelines and people's, uh, you know, health and safety comes first. So, obviously, we miss our fans, and, and we can't wait to get back to them. Thanks, Fred. Congratulations again. Hey, Fred, congrats on the contract. Uh, happy it all worked out for you. Um, when you talked before about having both feet in the door now and kind of closing the chapter, the last chapter of your career, moving on to the next one, what what is what are the things that you have in mind that, that you want to accomplish next? I mean, obviously you want to title, you got this deal. Like, what is kind of next on on the list for you? Um, all of the individual accolades that you could ever think of, I don't really share those publicly because that's not what I'm into. Um, but I got, got a lot a lot on the table that I want to get done. But for now, I'm just locked in on building towards that next championship. So, um, you know, that, that feeling of winning a championship, it trumps anything I've ever done in my life, in my career. Um, aside from my kids, that that's right up there as far as, you know, personal journeys and, and accomplishments that you can make. So just trying to chase that next, that next championship, um, that's what I'm locked in on. And I know the team is obviously trying to balance uh, future flexibility with also trying to be competitive now. Kind of what is your sense of what's going on with the roster for you guys over the past few days? Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's for those guys to worry about. Um, I kind of just show up and play with what we got. And, and um, you know, we'll see what we look like when we get to Tampa and we, and we, we uh, get some running, get some practice, get to camp. Um, but I'm excited. I'm excited about what we got. Um, I think we're kind of uh, headed back in the direction where we were pre-Kawhi, where, where people are, are overlooking us again, which is not a bad place to be in. So um, we got a lot of work to do, and we got to get a, a, a lot better, um, you know, as individuals. And and then we'll, we'll roll out there and see what we can do. So I'm excited. I can't wait to get back to work. Thanks again, man. Congrats. Thank you. Hey, Fred. Uh, first, in the interest of us ugly media people, are those uh, FVV branded golf shirts going to be available on FVVshop.com? Of course. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> um, I know you talked a little bit about the influence that your story has on, uh, you know, other undrafted guys who might be coming up. But I'm wondering if you feel um, any sort of way about you know, people in non-basketball realms who might be pulling from your story as well, the, the bet on yourself thing expanding beyond just basketball. You know, you and I talked about um, Robinson from the Jaguars, a kid from Rockford who kind of has kind of followed in that in that same path and um, Corey Anderson on the MMA side. How do you feel about whether it's Rockford or, or whether it's just fans in their everyday life pulling from your story? What does that mean to you? Um, yeah, it means the world to me. I mean, the world, I mean, this is a way of life, and, and we put words to it that made it make sense to people, but this is kind of the wave that we've been on for a long time here, and I'm just proud and excited and, and um, extremely humbled that I start to see it, you know, transition from sports to regular life. You know, we have people working regular jobs that come up to us and tell us, you know, that they hate their job and they have this passion and they want to pursue this passion and, and you know th those type of things mean the most to me so just that way of living in that lifestyle of, of knowing your, your value and, and loving yourself and having confidence in yourself and not waiting on somebody else to tell you that you're great you know just going out there and making it happen um, I will add that uh, it's not <laughs> it's not always this story like it doesn't always work out um, there have been plenty of lows throughout my journey in, in the way that I had to make it to this point, but I, I made it to this point. That's the that's the important part. And so once you detach yourself from like the social media world of having to have the greatest day in the world every day, you you can you, you can manage through you know the ups and the downs and just focus on the end goal and 
and um, you know, understand that like it's a marathon for sure, like like Nipsey said. Thanks so much, Fred, and congrats again. Thank you. Hey, Fred. Just like everyone else said, uh, congratulations. Um, I was just curious, uh, like like the Raptors drafted uh, rookie uh, Malachi Flynn, and he's kind of uh, kind of, he's kind of look, look to you as, as a role model, like kind of modeling his his game at, after. Like like I was just wondering, like like has he reached out to to you in the time since? Have 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 you reached out to him at all? Do you know anything anything about him? Uh, I'm doing my research. I learned about him. I actually. Uh... Got a chance to spend a couple of days with him. He was out at Impact. Um, I was working out with Kyle out there for a couple of days in Vegas, and he was doing his, his pre-draft thing. So, um, you know, I got to, to spend a, a little time with him, um, give him give him a couple free gems, um, and then we just, you know, change numbers. And I, I congratulated him on uh, on being drafted. And and you know, when we get when we get to work and get back to camp, uh, obviously I'll I'll share with him as much as much as he wants to learn you know I'll be willing to share and uh you know the best kind of teacher is experience so we just have to get through it but I like his game a lot and um you know I think him the way he plays being able to learn under me and Kyle is going to be very beneficial for him uh, do you see any similarities between your own game or, or, or Kyle's game and and, and his I mean, he's light skinned. I don't know. But other than that, I haven't really seen him play five on five. I just seen him in the workout. So, uh, you know, I, like I said, I want to see him in live action, see how he plays, see how, he, how his mind thinks, and you know, uh, obviously, if he got picked that high, uh, you know, the Raptors think highly of him. So, he must be able to do something right. Thanks a lot, Fred.